So you've just um, performed and done an interview on the Alan Titzmarsh show. What was that like? It's good actually, yeah. It was. Um, we didn't even know it was live, to be honest with you. Yeah. We were asking before, is this live? Because yeah. we're not normally pre-recorded, but we've done a. Actually, what, we've done a lot of live stuff this this campaign, haven't we? We've done maybe one other thing live. Yeah. So you sort of uh, you, you just try and uh, try and relax as it's much as you can. A little bit more pressure when it's live. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more pressure. We always think about what you're saying before you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about the kind of skills that a band like yours requires these days, because I think it's a new set of skills from someone in my age tr traditionally thinks of with a pop group. And I think it's interesting because sometimes I think they get neglected. What you have to do as a band mm. nowadays, it's a whole new world, isn't it? Well, the internet is something that we've had to learn ourselves. When we first started, you know, we've been a band seven years and there wasn't, you, we didn't even have the internet in our band house when we first uh, you know, got together, so we didn't, oh, add, we didn't have YouTube yeah. or MySpace or anything like that. Yeah. You know, and suddenly, I remember when we first got MySpace, and that was after we'd been a band for about three years, mm. and it was just suddenly this huge new thing. And you know, you had to have one, and you had to be on it, updating and sending messages. Otherwise, you know, you just kind of get lost. And then, you know, obviously, downloads started counting towards the, the official charts, and it was just you know, the internet kind of took over and dominated the music industry. Because in a way, I think when you get reviewed or when you get talked about, you often get talked about in a traditional sense of what a band is. Mm. And I personally think this is neglecting and underestimating a lot of things that you do as a band that I think should be rated as well. On the one hand, it's a huge advantage where we sit, you know, our demographic and the, the type of band we are because we're a pop band and, you know, the, we you know, uh, appeal to teenage girls, mm. just like a lot of boy bands do, but we write all of our songs. Yeah. and you know, play all of our instruments and go and record just like any credible rock band would. So mm. we, in one hand, have the best of both worlds, but at the same time, you kind of, it means that we have double the amount of work. Is it possible for you to be a rock group with the authenticity and potential integrity that involves while also playing the, the role and function of a, of a boy band? I don't know, I think it's what we've, what we'll find out. I think that's, this. yeah, I that's think what that's, that's what McFly is. It's sort, mm. of, sort of almost, well, it has achieved this. It's achieved the sort of musicianship with the young fans around, appealing to girls, and I suppose it's almost... It's kind of what we've evolved into, naturally, over the, over the past yeah. six years, I suppose. And then, you know, we get a lot of fulfilment out of it because we've been playing since we were five years old, so we want to, you know, we get to record albums, but then again, get the best fans in the world and, mm. and get to be on big things. So it's like, it's almost, it is amazing, that, uh, you know, what position we're in right now. So, so what, what kind of... Um decisions do you take amongst yourselves and I guess amongst your support team about maintaining your presence and so that it doesn't just disintegrate? Well, I think the biggest one was when we, we left uh, Ireland, we left our record company and went independent for it, which is on our last album, um, which was a huge decision for us to do that. And, uh, and then, you know, trying to find some way, we just wanted to get our music, obviously being, not having a record company anymore, we wanted to find a way of just creating as much noise about our album as we could and we did decided the best way to do it was to give our album away uh, for free with a newspaper uh, which is you know a sort of a big you know risk we didn't really know how that would work but on the other hand you get your album which you've worked so hard for into sort of two and a half million homes in one day which is you know and obviously then everybody's talking about it and it kind of you know makes you relevant for that, yeah. that small amount of time. Was that a decision that was put to you? It was kind of something we talked about. We knew we wanted to do something different, and mm. we didn't know we didn't know if we could. We didn't know if anyone would be interested. And then suddenly the opportunity came. You know, from uh, from the Mail on Sunday, it was. You know, came about. They were kind of doing things with Prince, and um, I think Paul McCartney had done one just before us. Mm. And uh, but there hadn't been anyone who was sort of young. It was always been like greatest hits and, and things, like, uh, best of collections before. So it was kind of you know we didn't really know whether it would work or not. But it, I think looking back, I would de it was a really really great decision for us because you know from it you can only really judge it on how sort of a year later how the year's gone and we managed to tour that that album so much in the UK it was the yeah. I think that, that year <laughs> yeah. it worked out every uh, on average it was one in every three days was a show so you're using you're essentially using your music to advertise yourself yeah so I think it's, it's so, yeah. Sort of, sort of, things have sort of flipped on their heads slightly haven't they from that yeah it's, it's almost that it was almost that sort of we've always struggled with you know we sell to our fans mm. but then People just like us, and people won't, you know, they won't go out and say, I'll go and get that today. So it was almost getting that, to have it in your home, just listen to it and check yeah. it out, because... It's that thing, know. like, we've become, somehow, over the past six years, a, a kind of household name, and I think most, a lot of people know who we are, and yes. all know the name McFly. 
um, but it's trying to get those people to then go out and buy your album. But at the same time, you know, we've got an amazing profile and our profile's high. Um, and it's, I think the, the, what's been kind of the challenge on this album is, you know, we started when Dougie was 15, I was 18, and we're kind of around that age. And, you know, we were really young. It's only now sort of we can really see how young yes. we were. And for, for, the, for the outsider, the cynical outsider that still maybe considers McFly to be like a little thing that fell off busted yeah. and hasn't really kept up to speed, I mean, what would you say is the big difference with the sound of this record? And how would you say this is how we're growing up because the record is like this? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it still amazes me that people, you know, we still get it, you know, people talking about the, you know, the whole busted connection and stuff now. Seven years down, even though they haven't even been together for about four years, I don't yeah. think now. But I think that's something we're never really going to get rid of. But um, no, this album is by far the most different to anything we've ever ever released before. It's compl I think ev every band comes back with their album and says, oh, it's completely different yeah. to everything we've done, but this really is. I think for all of our fans, you know, who'd been fans of all our other albums, it's the first time where it was a real shock when they heard it and be like, is this McFly? And it yeah. doesn't sound like anything they've done before. And then I think once they heard like the next single or saw us play it live, they're like, oh, I get it now. I get what they're kind of trying I think, to do. I think with our albums as well, you sort of buying into a time that we've had. It's sort of this is that time, that's that time, that's another time, this is now, yeah. and it's all it's all like, you know, it's, you can sort of hear it. You're like, oh, I get it now, and you start to understand what it's all about. The strange thing with this album was that it took it's the longest we've ever taken to make an album, and we went to Australia uh, first of all with a kind of collection of songs uh, with Jason Perry who produced our last album, and we recorded them, and we you know we loved them all, but it was just it was only at the end of it that we we kind of realised, we kind of, you know, thought that we should really be progressing and, and experimenting a bit and trying to evolve on this album. And we basically put all of those songs to one side and, and started again. And then, you know, started writing new songs, working with Ty, working with Dallas. And, uh, and so it was a real kind of natural evolution for us. But then, obviously, for the fans who just suddenly hear Party Girl or Shine a Light, it's a real big kind of, a real jump in direction. But for us, it's taken two years yeah. of a, a real, you can really, see if for us, well, you know, we could really see where we evolved and, and sort of our thought, yeah, our thought process along the way. And, and uh, another thing that I think is underestimated about what could be rated about a group like you is, is appearance. Because again, there's no doubt you have to have, for want of a better expression, a kind of showbiz appearance. There's a yeah. showbiz nature. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's important, you know, obviously it's a mass, the way you look for a pop band is, you know, a huge part of it. But the, the funny thing is, we never <laughs> paid much attention to the way no, we look before we're just in the young past. Try hard skater guys. Like we just we just turned up, wore, wore whatever we kind of felt comfortable in, thought we. Were, but then looking back, so how did we ever have success? Yeah. How did uh, girls ever want to, you know, fan, have they fancy us? Yeah, we did. Think when that. We look, you know, when we look back, so I think this was the first album where we really thought, right, we want to look after ourselves. In my day, which is I have to admit, a long time ago, there was something about pop music that was interesting because at the time, say the seventies when I was mm. a teenager, is that pop music was very much about imagining the future, if you like, right? Mm. Because it was all kind of new. Whereas with your generation, you know, pop music's now 40, 50 years old. There's a hell of a lot of reference points. There's a hell of a lot of people that have moved it forward. And I just wonder what the sensibility was like, because I, I get the feeling that a lot of pop music's not sure what to do about the future in a way. When Busted first came out, there was a lot of boy bands, you know, traditional boy bands yes. who were singing, dancing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, they're having massive success. And then suddenly Busted came along and it made boy bands, the traditional boy bands, yeah. look a bit silly because yeah. they had guitars. And they were, you know, they wrote their own songs, yeah. but they were still a boy band. They yeah. were just a boy band with guitars and had a bit yeah. more credibility. Yeah. But yeah. it made the other boy bands look silly. Yeah. And so that was kind of the death of the, the traditional boy band. And you know what? I do remember that in the late 90s on Top of the Pops, when suddenly at the end of the song, Busted held up, they didn't play it. They literally held up their guitar to the camera. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my God. They've got instruments, yeah. <laughs> just by the very nature of holding instruments. It was right, a revolutionary yeah. moment. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And then we, and then obviously we came, you know, just after that. And there was the, no boy bands came about after. No, no, no one had success. It was just us and busted for a while. And I remember when we would turn up. A lot of indie music actually. Yeah, and then indie brilliant. music came, you know, came about. Or you know, Green Day with the end came back with them, yeah. uh, with American Idiot and. A lot of English bands, yeah, a lot of English indie bands, kind of university bands, suddenly became really popular. But is there still an element, which I guess there has to be if it's really pop, of otherness, that you are other? I always had that with other bands when we first, you know, another band would walk into the room and be like, oh, that's, you know, yeah. such and such. We're like, oh, look, and it, like, you can feel their kind of presence. But I don't know, like, you can, no it's hard, you know, because we know, I don't know if, we, if we've ever had that. Tom's here. Oh my God, Danny, <laughs> Danny's sitting next to me on the sofa right now. This is really weird. I have, I have had a, uh, a couple of moments where I'm like, Mate, you are a good songwriter, man. Oh, gee, I never had that with you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and just, just to finish, I was just wondering what it, what, it, what it's been like when you are called a boy band, and if that annoys you, if, if you think... Only, oh, only it, if people think, obviously, the, you know, we're not the traditional... If you, say, if you said to, you know, the, these guys are a boy band, that, that this person didn't know about it, straight away you're thinking, I don't know what they're thinking, they're thinking, oh, they're going to dance, they're gonna have, there's going to be five of them with, with microphones. And there's, 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 there's so much more to, to McFly than that. Mm. So much more, so much depth, there's so much passion gone into it. You know, the albums, the writing, the musicianship, every guitar lick that we play as, you know, as two guitarists, we work it out, play, so we're playing stuff differently. So much more. Mm. I guess it's lucky that you started out and you didn't have your choreographed movements as well. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, I, suppose, I guess you could have, could have, couldn't could you? Could have, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, when Busted first came out, they, you know, I know they had, mm. you know, sort of choreographed, you know, moments where they would, you know, it was set, they would jump and they would do things like that. But that's what, what, what there's no, there's no problem with anything mm. like that. It's the nearest we've got to choreography, though, is don't go that way because a firework's going to go Because you're going to explode. <laughs> on the arena there. tour, yeah. Don't go that way because a big fire thing there. <laughs> hey, look, thanks ever so much. No, thank you very much. I thanks hope I was not necessarily us. better, but different it's than brilliant. Titchmarsh. No, no, it's you know, really like, nice and Alan about. Titchmarsh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice we, we, to talk about. Yeah, we never get a chance to do interviews like this. Yeah. So it's been amazing. Thanks. Hey, thanks ever so much for your time. Thank you. Brilliant.